On a Dark Road by Eric Anderson Two bright streams of light scythed through the fields of darkness. They cut a path that ran straight and narrow, catching the outlines of trees and shrubs as they moved ever forward. Passing below them was tarmac, more worn by weather than traffic, but the car rumbled on without trouble. Its speed was surprising, considering the pitch that surrounded it, but the route before it but the route before it lay empty of obstacles. The engine's purr was the only sound to be heard on the empty road. It was too far from the forest for animals, too early for the birds to chirp as they skittered overhead. Even the stars were obscured by a menacing sheet of dark clouds. The only evidence left of the world beyond were the tiny pinpricks of yellow from the distant town. It was this hope of civilization that the driver was seeking the respite of a hotel shower and bed. He had no idea what might be causing the apparent blackout along the road. Perhaps some problem at a local power station, or perhaps a blown generator somewhere. Whatever it was had left the streetlights dead and useless. Another inconvenience to add to the pile. He knew that once he reached the town, its place would quickly be taken by another. He just hoped that whatever it was was able to wait until morning to be dealt with. There was a certain peace in this loneliness. Traveling from place to place gave him something to busy his mind with, be it paperwork on a train, people watching, or simply the act of driving. Some of the routes he took would even be pleasant to the eye. Perhaps when it was not hidden behind the outlines of trees and the shadows of clouds, this road had a view of rolling hills dotted with flowers, or patchwork fields divided by stone walls. For now, all he had to focus on was the little strip of tarmac in front of him, endlessly cycling beneath him. His gaze moved to the lights of the town briefly. The spots of yellow were few and dim, presumably from the few buildings that had their own backups. He took a moment to watch them as he drove, in an attempt to gauge how close he was. A second passed, then two, then three. A slight shift could be seen, definitely noticeable. He hoped that many was getting close. His eyes moved back to the band of light in front of the car. His foot slammed to the floor in panic. Wheels screeched suddenly as the momentum of the vehicle suddenly shifted, the beam from the headlights making an angle with the road. The suspension bounced. He had been too late to react. He hit the thing in the road. His mind refused to acknowledge what it had been. The time it took for the car to shudder to a halt after the brakes were hit was not long but those few seconds stretched out as the man felt his stomach fall and his jaw lock. The car was now at a sharp angle with the road, as a small wall of shrubs that marked its boundary stretched out at a diagonal. He stared straight ahead, knuckles white as his hands gripped the steering wheel. The only sounds were the engine purring and his ragged breaths as he focused unblinkingly on nothing. When he released his grip on the wheel, his hands shook. It was almost imperceptible, but he could feel it. As the door swung awkwardly open, he was hit by a stiff breeze that sent a chill through his whole body. He swung his legs out. Finding them unwilling to support his weight, he forced his way up with a tremendous effort. Breathing in the cold air, he was no longer sure if he was trembling or shivering. Inky black surrounded the scene made worse by the bright headlights overwhelming what little other light there was. Stumbling to the trunk, the man dug around until he found a flashlight he had crammed into a gap in case of emergency. He shone the light back the way he'd come, sweeping randomly along the road. The beam found a small figure. He approached it, hugging the small stone wall in order to keep his balance. Closer up, he realized it was the body of a little girl. Her skin was a pale white that stood out against the bright red of her shirt. Her eyes were closed, as though sleeping. Her hair, a dark brunette, lay strewn across the road. Limbs lay at unnatural angles, splayed out carelessly about her. The image seemed surreal as the man stared down at the girl, at her corpse. Cold air and activity stirred his mind back into motion. He looked further up and down the road. No lights, no outlines or noises to indicate anything else lay in the night. No one to have seen the terrible accident. 
fingers pressed against the side of the girl's throat. Her skin was cold. No pulse. He put the back of his palm to her nose and mouth to feel for breath. Nothing. He stood back up, thinking over his course of action. It was clearly too late to try saving her. Too late to call for help. To claim innocence. No matter what happened now, this could not be undone. Not without a miracle. The void around him offered no answers. Bile rose in his chest, head feeling light. Minutes passed like this. Occasionally he would glance down to the girl, but he only saw one course of action to take. He walked up the road once more, lifted her by her shoulders, and dragged her lifeless form to the side of the road. He climbed onto the low stone wall, hoisting her over with some difficulty. He searched the tree line behind the wall until he found a thick patch of foliage between two trees. With effort, he dragged her under the bush with one hand, arranging the fallen branches and leaves to help conceal the terrible secret that lay beneath. Back in the car, he leant back into his seat. Carefully maneuvering the vehicle back into the lane, he checked his mirrors. Nothing lay behind him besides empty road and darkness. That and buried somewhere beneath it, the weight of guilt. He set off once more. He hoped it would not be too much longer to the hotel. Yellow bulbs sizzled and gave the hallway a nauseous yellow glow. He padded down its length, muffled footfalls seeping into the eerie calm that infected the expanse. Every few steps he would pass a pair of doors that flanked the path, each leading to the unknown lives, hopes, and horror. Numbers counted down as he waded deeper and deeper into the bowels of the building, until he reached the one that belonged to him. He pushed open his door gently, so as to not wake others in their rooms. Heavy wood brushing against carpet with a pleasing bristle. A dark expanse lay beyond. Light from the hallway was quickly absorbed within the heart of the room. Cold air washed out from the darkness as he pulled himself in. A chill ran down his spine as the door began to swing shut. Illumination slowly reduced to a vertical sliver. With a simple click of a wall switch, The predatory darkness shrank away. A black void reduced to soft shadows between furniture. The room was neat, and as expected. Clean white sheets were spread crisp and smooth across the welcoming bed. Fabrics matching the style of the long, thick curtains hiding the outside world. A simple black TV screen sat on a rich brown desk. The illusion of class, painted onto the plastic and oaky patterns. His minimalistic luggage fit naturally with the room, one corner seeming almost purpose-built to fit the bags exactly. Everything was expected, his life fitting into the drab space with a perfect snugness. The bathroom proved to be no escape from the image of perfection. Tiles and ceramics glinted with a clinical sterility. His presence in the room felt like an unwanted blemish, from his wrinkled clothes smelling of stale sweat and cold air to his pale face and gaunt eyes staring back from the mirror. A stain to be removed from the pristine professional cleanliness. Ignoring his own haunting visage projected in reverse before him, he stripped off to shower. Warm water cascaded, the rush of heat and motion drawing a welcome contrast to the cold, stagnant air of the outside. Sounds of falling droplets filled the air with a calm, constant drumming. The quiet cacophony reigned unwaveringly over his mind, providing a curtain of distraction to hide behind. Soap spilled out from bottles too small, their sickly sweet smells drowning out other senses. All were ritualistic actions, well entrenched, usual and necessary procedures that served purposes both spiritual and physical. Suddenly quiet, cold crept clamily back over him. A tiny dread arose from within his chest. White fibers assaulted the skin, as the towel was brought to bear against his wandering thoughts. Roughness of starched cotton scoured against him. The material wicked away the sad damp that dripped from his body. As he laid it to dry on the heated metal rack, he was surprised to see that it had remained untainted. The same uniform white as before, hanging in the same place he'd found it. Dressing back into his used, wrinkled clothes, he slunk back out into the room. Everything was as it had been except for her. She lay on the bed at the same angle she'd been on the road, 
eyes closed, skin pale. In the full lights of the room, the bruising was apparent on her lifeless figure, neck striking a sharp, unhealthy angle from her torso. His heart dropped out of his chest, stomach following suit. His eyes widened, as though taking in more of the dreadful scene would explain it all away. There were no footprints leading up to the bed and no indication that the body had been adjusted. The room was untouched, with everything neat and in its place. Except for her. He approached slowly, each footstep taken with a breath held, tiptoeing up to the podium of death. Reaching out, he found that she was just as cold as she had been before. No pulse and no breath. The air seemed heavier this close up. The lights seemed harsher, shadows striking violent angles against walls and carpet. There was no way she could be here. He knew that. The memory of hiding her body beneath the brush was carved into the space behind his eyes. Someone must have put her here. Someone must know. Spinning madly around, he searched the room. He ripped the cushions from chairs, pulled drawers haphazardly from the desk. Fumbling with his keycard, he checked the door was still locked, then checked the corridor. Outside the door hung the same uneasy calm and sickly yellow light as before. A space that did not want to be inhabited. A place that people passed through but did not stay. No marks or tracks betrayed the presence of anyone else. The door closed. He once again checked it was locked, then checked again. No one could know. No one could be allowed to see this. She still lay there. He returned to her side. His mind reeled for a solution. Emotions had left him now. He was too deep. Only an empty logic remained with empathy calloused over. Then her eyes fluttered. Frozen in place, he watched the miracle happen. Color returned to her face. Bones melded back to more comfortable positions. Muscles twisted and readjusted. Eyes snapped open. The girl gulped in the stagnant air around her, lungs straining into function one more. Shakily, she shifted herself on the bed, moving into a sitting position. She jumped slightly when she noticed him in the room. He was still frozen, staring. Her gaze fell, brushing herself down awkwardly, straightening her hair to give herself something else to do. When she allowed her eyes to venture up again, the man was still staring at her, blank-faced as he stood there like a statue. Unsure how to react, she settled on a nervous smile as she looked out sheepishly from behind her tangled hair. The man's mind was still reeling, but it had slowed now. He'd had time to process the situation, and a conclusion had formed. No one could know. A force beyond his control spurred his body into motion. His arms raised as though for a hug. The girl, still scared by the strange man, recoiled slightly. But she was against a wall and had nowhere to retreat to. His hands changed from open palms to rigid claws. Arms moved together. His hands wrapped around the girl's throat. Surprise caught her off guard. Unable to choke out a protest before powerful tendons were pushing against her neck with unrelenting force. He stared into her face, unblinking, unwavering, as he saw her struggle weakly against his grasp. His face was blank. Her movements became weaker. Eyes, once open wide, sagged shut over glassy pupils. Skin became the same necrotic pallor that it had been before. Flesh grew cold as the warmth of life was forced out. Vertebrae gave the slight but distinct crack to call the scene a close. The man stood. His clothes had returned to their unblemished excellence. Wrinkles ironed away and colors full and vibrant. A cozy yellow illumination filled the room, casting friendly rays on the furniture. Now arranged into their perfect configurations once more, he breathed in heartily and found the air was light and fresh. His gaze returned to the bed. It had been remade as he looked away, but now it was covered in a thick tar that oozed across its surface. This would not do. With an immaculate care and grace, he whipped the sheet from the bed, spinning it around in the air, allowing it to drift back down. It landed in the exact position it needed. Surface smooth and clean, with edges even and straight. The room had been transformed back into how it had been. Everything was neat and in its place. 
Calmly, he undressed, laying his suit in a neat, folded pile on the chair. He climbed into the bed, getting settled in, finding a certain comfort in the viscous black slime melding against him. Lights dimmed and faded without the need to flip the switch, and the room was cast slowly into an apathetic darkness that enveloped all within. Each of the bulbs faded one by one, making the transition smooth and welcoming, each one dying with a resigned grace. The last light to extinguish was the one behind his eyes.